I'm a bit of a nomad, and so I will often throw everything in my camper and light out for a change of scenery. Until this particular night in a parking lot in Nevada, nothing strange had ever happened to me. At the time, it was late, and I was inside my camper trying to bed down for the evening. I was parked in a lot on the outskirts of a small city near to the mountains. The freeway was nearby, as was the airport, so even though the lot was relatively empty, I didn't exactly feel isolated. About an hour after tucking in, I heard what sounded like a terrible, feminine scream. These reverberating, disembodied noises. At first, I figured that while it was a little unnerving, it was probably some animal being amplified or altered by road noise and acoustics. It stopped soon enough, but I was intrigued and tried setting up my phone to record. Unfortunately, the microphone wasn't able to pick up anything. This makes me think I was just dreaming for what happened next, but I remember being pretty alert and able to move, wiggle my feet, and so on. Maybe 30 minutes later, I heard the sounds again, but they went on for much longer, a half hour or more. I began to wonder if they were coming from the trailer next to me. I stayed put. Then I heard the sounds, still at a distance, start coming from around my door, and now I was freaked out. I kept trying to convince myself it was some sort of wild cat, even though the strange acoustics didn't really make sense. And then it spoke. I heard it say what sounded like my name and a string of really specific insults directed at some of my deepest anxieties. Sometimes the sounds would pause. And when they did, all of my hair would stand up in a wave like it never has before. This went on a few more times until I eventually decided to not let the sounds and insults bother me. Soon, the noises stopped for the rest of the night. I was still on edge and couldn't sleep much. Once the first light of dawn began to creep over the mountains, I gave up and moved on, catching a couple hours in a truck stop parking lot a few dozen miles away. To this day, I wonder if this was just a case of a bad dream or sleep paralysis, but what was strange is I remember shifting around a little and moving my feet. I was also listening pretty intently. Maybe it was my imagination, but... I don't think so. And uh, still not the most horrible thing that's ever happened in a truck stop parking lot, but it's right. up there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, well, it's still pretty creepy. Uh, holy smokes. Uh, yeah, I've, I've heard some strange things in parking lots. I've slept in parking lots uh, when I was traveling across the country. It was only two nights, essentially, I slept um, in like a rest stop parking lot. And I, you hear strange things in strange places. But I never heard anything saying my name and, and talking about uh, how fat I am or any of that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, right? I, I like, thanks, disembodied voices. I can give myself enough shit. I don't need the help. Yeah, right? <laughs> Actually, I will say, though, I think that that's something that would not work on me. Because hmm. while I, I will sabotage myself from now until the end of time, uh, other people cannot do it for me. Mm -hmm. So like, unless it's someone I really care about, your opinion is just irrelevant to me. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if it was my voice, maybe like, man, you're not really very good at your job, are you? Oh, shit. You know, that would be, that might get inside my head. Well, that is inside my head. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mine too. Mine too. Yeah. <laughs> Bit yes. of imposter syndrome, but yeah, never an <laughs> external voice like that. That is really scary. I, I kind of thought at first I was thinking maybe like a wild animal, you know, like, uh, cause th there's, what is it? Not a fox, but something like that. When it screams, it sounds like a woman screaming. Cats can do that. If you've ever been woken up by a cat at 3 a.m. in the morning, that's good. I mean, foxes screaming. We hear them round here all the time. By goodness. If you didn't Maybe know what they were. foxes I'm thinking of. Mm, they are terrifying. You can hear them for ages. So either when they're mating or when they're sort of playing, they make tons of racket. Um, owls do used... as well. Owls can screech like a, like a banshee. I used to live next door to an oil refinery in Burnaby, British Columbia. And uh, and so at night we would hear uh, there were coyotes that lived on the property over there. And they would, one would start yipping. And before you knew it, it there was this howling cacophony of, of uh, coyotes. And n you did not get any sleep once the coyotes were doing whatever they were doing. It, it was so, so eerie to hear. And it was like, you never knew when it was going to happen, but it was always at an inopportune time. 
it's kind of crazy to think that you can have populations of animals like that in an urban place like Surrey or sorry, mm-hmm. Burnaby. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. we, I, I think we always forget that these things are, are a little more, I guess, in keeping our, with our theme of, of, you know, dangerous Canadian animals. Mm. Um, yeah. You just forget that these things can actually just be out there. You know, it's, yeah, who's it's, encroaching uh, on whose territory really? Yeah. You know, I, like I, I was reading that Toronto is having a real problem with raccoons. They've more or less given up. Japan is Japan is struggling with bears right now. Like there are urban areas where in Japan where bears are wandering in to uh, different places and and at- having bears attack human beings who confront them or surprise them or something like that. So on the Japanese news, somebody sent me an article uh, of the Japanese news doing a how to prevent bear attacks with one of the reporters dressed as a bear with just a bear hat, like a, a mask on, you know, pretending to be the bear and the other reporter showing this is what you should do kind of thing if you're ever attacked by a bear. You know, if this was an 80s movie or an 80s mm-hmm. uh, comedy, that guy would then be humped by a bear. Right, right, definitely. Think, what what movie does that happen in, Paul? It was a movie you told me about. It's a gorilla. Oh, that's Trading Places. Trading places. That's, right. That's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. The uh, the guy gets locked in the cage with the amorous gorilla. <laughs> That's the one. That's the one. Mm. It was a different time. <laughs> Me too, gorilla. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Yeah. But they use um they use robot wolves in uh, in Japan to to uh, well they used to to keep the wolves and the bears away from certain areas mm-hmm. but obviously they're not working right yeah maybe the, maybe the the bears are on to the the robotics i don't know or, or maybe they can actually smell that it's not real there could be that hmm. i mean it, it seems that people were more scared of them than the, than the wildlife because they do look like some kind of robotic hellhound <laughs> I was going to say that's because animals are immune from existential dread. Mm. Mm. So, I mean, it's like, oh, that's just, that's just another human piece of garbage. Whereas we look at that and go, well, I'm looking forward to when the cops are using that to chase me down. Right. Perhaps they just need to start dressing as the kappa and that should frighten the bear away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little cucumber. I'm missing something completely here. A cap is like a, a a Japanese folkloric water monster that's uh, a, a bit of a trickster, but also very vicious. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, strangely seen as one of the main bad guys in the absolutely batshit crazy Yakuza apocalypse. Aha! Uh-huh. I still got to watch that. That's the one where the guy uh, has the frog mask and is fighting with a samurai sword? Yes. 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 On his little tricycle. Okay, I've not seen the tricycle part. I've only seen the bits <laughs> of the That's how he appears. He just end. rides in. There's like a big Yakuza vampire zombie battle. And then this man in a frog suit turns up riding a tricycle, gets off and just starts <laughs> kung fuing everybody. It's two hours, 20 minutes of absolute madness. I can't, I gotta, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch this. That I, sounds I, like my kind of film. Yeah, I've been meaning yeah. to watch this for years. I, I remember I, when I cut, to get, cause, pardon me. When I cut together the trailer for that frog movie we did for Movie Nightish, <laughs> I used I used clips from Yakuza Apocalypse, but I I didn't never actually got around to watching the whole thing. Yes, yes, the the Ray Milland frogs film where the, everything attacks them apart from frogs in the last scene. <laughs> yeah, the frogs just sort of turn up after everyone's already done yeah, the job. That is such a bizarre movie. Like, wh- why even call them frogs? I don't understand it. Just my cousin, such a my cousin Jerry's got a whole truckload of frogs. <laughs> You want, you want to use them for something? <laughs> <laughs> Strangely enough, I stumbled into 10 minutes of Food of the Gods again the other day and just laughed as uh, giant rats seem to take an incredibly long time to eat people. <laughs> well, that's I don't know how you keep stumbling across this film. I it, th- This is not how television works in North America. We have episodes of Gilmore Girls, mm-hmm. and uh, I think maybe they keep showing, like, Ice pirates, and that—that's—that's that's it. <laughs> Cellar dwellers on a, on on again tomorrow. I've never seen that film for thirty years, and now it'll be twice in three months. You magnificent oh. son of a bitch! You brought up ice pirates, and I met uh, Robert Urich when I used to do security <laughs> at a high end 
<laughs> high-end uh, hotels um, here in Vancouver. I met all kinds of people, but Robert Urich was a guest uh, before he, obviously, before he passed away. But um, he uh, was telling me that he was off to Italy after filming the movie that he was doing to take a uh, a cooking course from some famous chef. I can't remember the guy's name. But, oh, wow. But that was one of his hobbies. I used to just chat all these guys up just for fun, you know? Like Christopher Walken came out one time. He was going to go for a run. Uh, and <laughs> he, was, he was wearing, you know, a black sweatshirt. But he, he, he was wearing just regular slacks that were too short for him. And, <laughs> and loafers and a hat. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, oh, Mr. Walken, where are you off to? He's, I'm going for a run. <laughs> and, and, and I said, oh, well, what's with the hat? It's a disguise. <laughs> no notes. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> this, is, this is how humans dress, right? <laughs> uh, it's, Fooled it's him. Amazing. Fooled another one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 